Hello and welcome to everyone on today's session for how to streamline data labeling for model acceleration. Um, we have some people that look like they're still kind of filing in, but we think that uh, now is a good enough time to go ahead and get started. We have a very exciting um, agenda today and lots to get through. Want to make sure we have enough time to get through it all and still have questions at the end. So we'll go ahead and begin. My name is Trey Pierce and I head up uh, solutions engineering here on the commercial side of the business at Clarify. I'll be one of the speakers here today. I'll be joined by my esteemed colleagues, Michael Tolbert, who's one of our senior data strategists and Jeff Toffoli, a senior technical writer at Clarify. Uh, today's agenda, we're gonna take a look at some of the labeling challenges you might've experienced uh, in your own line of work. Some of the labeling features we developed in our own platform to address some of these challenges. Uh, we'll, can, we'll have a live demonstration uh, to go through some of those features and conclude with tackling some of those viewer questions that you might be having. But first, a bit of housekeeping very quickly. Um, everyone, we're gonna ask to stay muted uh, during the course of this call. It's just the best way to handle uh, calls with lots of viewers on them. That said, we would still love to hear from you. So if you have any feedback, if you have questions that pop up while we're presenting or demoing, we really encourage you to go ahead and, and jot that into the comment section. If you haven't used uh, Google Meets before, that's gonna be in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, we'll be collecting those and at the end, uh, be addressing those at the end. Um, also, just a note that today's webinar will be recorded and will be sent out to all uh, attendees and registrants early next week. Okay, so, but first we want to tackle just a bit of background on who we are here at Clarify for those who maybe are not aware. We are an award-winning venture-backed group of computer vision experts founded by our founder and CEO, Matt Zeeler, who back in 2013 won the ImageNet competition. For those who are unaware, it's a very esteemed image recognition competition in the computer vision world. And instead of going on to work for uh, Google or Amazon, um, decided to found his own company. And since then has accumulated more than $40 million in venture backing and built out one of the industry leading deep learning platforms that we're gonna be talking about and showing off a little bit today. Okay, so now I am happy and proud and excited to be handing this off to Michael Tolbert, one of my good friends and one of our chief uh, data strategists, who's gonna talk a little bit about some of the labeling challenges today. Michael. Awesome, thanks Trey, and hi everyone. Uh, jumping right in, there really is so, so much to think about in the labeling process, like how to move data between labeling and training tools, how to sift through unlabeled data to find images of interest, how to manage repetitive tasks in one platform. Um, it's been quite a journey for me to this point. Before joining Clarify, I was one of the first full-time staff labelers at Twitter, uh, which we all know. And for the way that we now think about the value of accurately, accurately labeled data, aside from just having a lot of it, uh, labeling data wasn't really a priority back then. And Twitter hadn't made any significant investment in creating a robust tool for us to do our jobs efficiently at that time. Uh, we often found ourselves going back and forth between spreadsheets and sticky notes, uh, often along with some third party tools. It's been a while, but I think, I actually, I think I've actually printed an image and hand delivered that annotation before, um, which not ideal. Uh, seriously, we'd spend unnecessary time moving data back and forth using external hard drives during the labeling and training process, uh, which after using the Clarify platform made me think there's absolutely no way I'm ever going back to this. So when I joined Clarify, having a dedicated labeling tool within an end-to-end -end AI platform made my job and my team's job that much easier. The quality and speed at which we were able to complete data labeling projects improved dramatically. I think anyone that's had to work with creating training data sets and building models can appreciate the power of what we offer. And that's a one-stop shop to label, train, relabel, retrain, analyze, and deploy models using one platform. The end-to-end -end AI life cycle, uh, AI life cycle, as we say here at Clarify. All right, so three of the biggest challenges that we kept hearing from customers was that having to quickly scale for large labeling projects was something that they did not look forward to. Also, we heard how labor intensive labeling is and that more complex use cases required more advanced tools. For example, 
in addition to knowing what's happening in the image, which is simple image classification, people also want to know how many objects are in each image or video and where the objects are located in an image or video. We also realize that these more challenging use cases require much more advanced tools. Uh, I saw a great quote a little while ago that said, if an image is worth a thousand words, then video is priceless. And I think for many modern computer vision and deep learning solutions, I think it's really a necessity. Uh, imagine an insurance provider, uh oh, someone's off mute. There we go. Uh, imagine an insurance provider for underwriting purposes needs to understand damage from different angles, using different lighting conditions in different terrain and on different materials. Uh, any version of a valuable detector in that scenario is going to require immense amounts of data that are much more easily produced using videos instead of images. It would take forever, or at least a very, very, very long time, to both acquire and label enough images to create a robust enough detector for that use case. But being able to label video can reduce these pain points dramatically. Just 10 seconds of video can produce between 300 and 600 images. Also, with the move to distributed teams, especially during these unprecedented times, the need for a robust task management system is greater than ever. How else would you be able to distribute hundreds of thousands of images to people sitting across continents, across offices, or even across the table from each other? Uh, for example, imagine an online clothing retailer with a huge catalog of items that wants to recognize what people are wearing on social media and then point them to similar items on their website. Sort of like a product recommendation. Um, or a customer in real estate that's looking to create a mobile snap and search experience for architecture and interior design features to elevate the way that their customers interact when looking at potential homes. Um, the large scale of some of these projects that require categorizing every item of clothing or identifying every architectural style of a home in the US requires complex ways of working together across teams and across locations. Not to mention taking advantage of individual specializations, which can all be very challenge, challenging to manage. Uh, and on top of that, you need to keep track of all of it. <clears throat> With that said, wouldn't it be nice if there was a simple, elegant way to move millions of images across teams, no matter where they're located? Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Trey for a walkthrough of some of the, the newest labeling tools we've developed in our platform, specifically for tackling those kinds of large-scale labeling projects. Trey? Thank you, Michael. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to I'm excited to be going through some of the newest labeling features that we've released into the platform. Um, but first, just to echo some of the things that Michael just said, um, for some time now, our platform has already included some very powerful tools for accelerating uh, single user labeling efforts by maybe just a single data scientist. Specifically, some of those ones are like our visual search capabilities. This allows you to uh, ingest a bunch of raw unlabeled data and using our visual search capabilities that are powered by a lot of our robust pre-built models, start actually culling down and focusing in on potential inputs that are candidates for being labeled, and then in the Explorer view, being able to, to label those. But also the fact that it being integrated with our training tools, okay, allows you to quickly train your models without having to move all that data back and forth over and over again between different disjoint tools. These tools will continue to be used in our platforms uh, to uh, train and deploy business critical models every single day. That said, and however, the truth is, as many of you probably already are aware, not every labeling project is created equal. And there are kind of a certain number of factors that contribute to the fit for a single user labeling effort. Uh, specifically, we put these into a number of kind of high level questions that you might ask yourself to begin uh, assessing your labeling needs um, for a particular use case. Do you require training an entire graph? And by this, we mean um, is your use case not really serviceable for uh, transfer learning, okay? A very niche uh, data set where you don't really have the feature extraction that's uh, required for that use case. Well, in this case, you might need to do what we call deep training the entire graph, which requires a significantly larger quantity of training data um, that you'll actually have to train to actually get decent results. Does your use case require object localization? Okay, do you need to say where something is in a particular image? Well, if that's the case, then the training data you're gonna need, it needs to be manually drawn bounding boxes or polygons, uh, which requires an order of magnitude more labeler effort per each and every image. 
And finally, ask yourself, is this subject matter very niche? Do we need a lot of niche expertise? Well, if that's the case, then your data scientists themselves might not even have that subject matter knowledge needed to correctly establish ground truth. So if you find yourself answering yes to even one of these questions, you might find that single user labeling might be insufficient for your task at hand. Um, often feeling this need on our, for our own projects. Just over a year ago, we set out to build a suite of tools designed from the ground up to tackle labeling jobs at the largest of scales. And I'm very proud to be discussing today some of those newest labeling tools we've released into the platform. Chief among them is the release of our new task manager and labeler modules. So hearkening back to that kind of war, uh, workflow I showed you before, you as the data scientist can still use that visual search capability to ingest all of your raw data and cull down and start focusing in on candidates for labeling. But instead of actually doing the labeling effort yourself, you now have the ability to actually distribute out that work to a designated labeling team via the task manager. Those labeler users, okay, will then be able to label the images efficiently in the new optimized labeler UI. Uh, you're gonna see all of, uh, we're about to go into some of the feature highlights and then there will be a demo by Jeff here at the end of all these. And finally, all those labels will be instantly available for training jobs to be configured and optimized back by you, uh, the data scientist on your end. So so let's quickly take a look at the features that are available within the task manager. So um, if you try to do kind of cross-functional task delegation almost in any capacity within your company before, you might have realized that efficiency really comes down to begins and ends with having a good task manager tool. And that's what we saw and we realized we should build that into the platform itself. So within the task manager, you'll be able to select from a number of different labeling modes. So if you're doing classification, being able to do image level uh, labeling with different classes, multi-class, bounding boxes, and different multi-point polygons all supported. Um, there's different distribution strategies for just how you want to give inputs to your different labelers. You can choose different partitioning methods. There's options for weighting. Maybe I want to give certain users more images than other ones. And there's even redundancy rules for saying maybe I want every image to be viewed by at least two individuals. And it's going to do all those calculations in the background automatically. There's quality assurance configurations that have been built in. Uh, Jeff will show some of this, I think, uh, here in the demo at the end, um, as well as a really powerful powerful tool being able actually not to just distribute tasks to your own in-house labeling team, but actually to submit labeling orders to our labeling as a service capability, also a brand new thing that we've introduced recently. Um, those tasks can then be uh, tackled by your labelers within the new optimized labeler view. So we took a hard look at all the existing labeling capabilities in the UI already in Explorer view. And we said, how can we make these even more efficient specifically for a labeling user, okay? And so we built in some pretty powerful and cool features. Once again, Jeff will show like um, in-browser in image adjustments, doing zooms and pans, changing a little bit the brightness, contrast, saturation, getting a better look at what you're trying to actually label. Um, there's a fully optimized labeling UI with color-coded labeling classes, configurable keyboard shortcuts, and really powerful and cool thing that I, I love to show off in my own demos quite frequently is the new video labeling capabilities, uh, full video playback support, bounding box interpolation. Um, he'll show this off if that doesn't make sense, really cool, as well as uh, configurable frames per second extraction, um, all built in. Um, but we didn't stop there. So we realized there is an opportunity to make the labeling even more efficient by making model predictions for models that are being trained within our platform available to your labelers as suggestions. So as a data scientist, this really allows you to begin closing that loop on the model development process, achieving kind of that um, in vogue human in the loop labeling processes that focus your labelers efforts exactly where they're needed most, okay? Um, so let's take a little bit of a closer look at what we mean by the AI assist. Um, as I've already mentioned a few times at this point, one of the biggest benefits of our platform is that it does seamlessly integrate the labeling, training, and deployment tools. And so by leveraging the integrated training and deployment tools, we're able to supplement the labeler's effort with the model learnings iteratively 
right? As they're doing more and more labeling. So you might be asking yourself like, why is that important? Why are people talking about it all the time in every publication that you're reading, right? Um, well, it's because it allows you to get out of maybe what you might consider a linear model development process, right? into a more powerful iterative or cyclical uh, labeling process, okay? So for example, very quickly, if I have a labeling job that I have a million different inputs for, instead of the old fashioned way where I try to label all 1 million in one shot, train it up and then do the evaluation and deploy, okay? Instead, take 5% of that 1 million, train up an initial model version of what you have, okay? then turn back around and use that model to provide suggestions back to the labelers, right? It's not gonna be perfect yet, but maybe it already knows 20, 30% of that unlabeled um, data set, and that's 20 or 30% of your labeling time that gets um, automated and brought back, uh, uh, you know, saving time, saving money. So at the end of the day, um, next slide for me, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> At the end of the day here, um, the bottom line is if you're watching um, this webinar right now and maybe you're still using some disjoint different labeling tools, if you don't have, um, you're not using a platform where your labeling and training tools already integrated, you probably could also already benefit um, just by using our single user labeling tools um, uh, that are available. Um, but now with the introduction of the new task manager label review, um, and AI assist capabilities, we've brought that even to the next level. So if you're already someone that's using our platform, um, maybe there's some projects that you have that you've kind of skipped over or put on the back burner because it requires a huge amount of labeling effort. Now's the time where you can go ahead, bring those back up, uh, try out the new uh, distributed labeling capabilities and get new ROI from accelerated model development there. Okay, so that was a lot of words and a lot of slides, but now the fun part uh, is actually seeing it in action. So I am proud to hand this over to Jeff, one of our esteemed senior technical writers here, who is going to uh, give us a live demonstration. Jeff, uh, you're muted, so. Thanks, Trey, I'm just getting unmuted here. Yep. All right, so, um, well, I'm, of course, very excited because now I get to show Labeler in action. So let's take a look. Um, I've got, uh, so let's, let's, let's just start here at Portal. And for those who are not familiar with how Clarify works, uh, we provide an API uh, so that you can really integrate our services within yours, you know, make your company an AI company, as it were. We also provide Portal, which is this user interface, uh, which is where the labeler service uh, lives. And today, let's dive into this app that I've already built. And apps are containers for your projects. Um, and let's take a look here. I've got, uh, we'll, we'll go into what's called Explorer View. And let's just take a look here. So we've had some images taken at a park here in Colorado. And my app here is called Park Life. And what we're gonna label are just these activities that people are up to in the park. Um, so we're gonna create a visual de uh, detection model that would be able to understand the activities that people are up, in, up to in a park. So let's get started. Um, let's dive over here to this labeler tab. So all, all of these uh, task delegation and, and labeling uh, activities happen here and you're gonna see this initial tab, all tasks. Um, this is where you're gonna start and create your tasks and delegate to your team so that you can conquer uh, labeling projects of any size. Okay, so let's, let's give it a shot. We're gonna press this blue create task button and um, let's give our task uh, park activities in Denver. Um, so we're just giving it a descriptive name. Down below, you've got a very useful area where you can provide instructions to your labelers. You can provide images that are examples of the things that they should be labeling, tables and various other information. So it's integrated right within the platform the way that you provide instructions to the labelers. For today's demonstration, I uh, will just keep moving here. And uh, next up is the task type. Now, so uh, Clarify, of course, supports AI for images, video, and text. 
Um, in Labeler, we support classification, detection, and uh, uh, polygon uh, labeling. So for today's example, we're going to do a bounding box. And this is where you draw a box around an object in your images. Um, next up, you can choose your input source. Uh, the input source is super useful when it comes to actual practical uh, projects, because this is how you can slice and dice your data set. Um, as you saw before, we just have a few images. This is just for a demonstration. I'm just going to leave it at all inputs for, the, for our purposes here. Um, and then I already created some concepts here. Uh, so these are various activities that we saw from the images before, cycling, dog walking, rollerblading, running. These concepts are what your AI is kind of all about. And uh, so this is what we're going to train the model to understand. Uh, you can create as many concepts as you like. You would just click this button and create your concepts. And then uh, our next layer here would be to choose your workforce. You've got two very, very good options here working with uh, Clarify's labeler. One is to use your own labelers. You can assign these tasks to anybody who's got a Clarify account. Um, and you would just drop their name here in the workers field. Or you can actually delegate your labeling uh, project to Clarify. We can take on the whole thing. Uh, our internal labelers, of course, use the same tools. They use a uh, labeler just like you would use. Um, but we can handle the, the staffing and provide a, uh, expertise, of course, um, in terms of uh, the data science side of things and, and getting everything labeled just right. Um, OK. so. For this example today, I will be the only worker, so I'm going to sign myself there. Uh, for worker strategy, um, we're just going to select full. You do have the option to partition your work. So, yes. so imagine you have 10,000 inputs that you need labeled. You can chop this uh, this group of data uh, up in up into smaller groups and delegate this to your team. Okay. And uh, but for this again, we're just doing full since we just have the, the small number of examples. Review strategy for today's demo. Uh, I'm not going to get into demonstrating this part of things, but this is how you assure quality. Uh, Clarify provides ways for reviewers to review all of the labels done by a set of workers, or even just a small sampling of the labels uh, to just uh, sort of uh, get an idea of the overall quality, get an impression of the overall quality of a given labeler or a given labeling task. OK, so for review strategy, I'm going to select none. And the last part is really where it gets exciting. And this is just where, where Clarify is so different, right? Because we are an AI company that really started, we were perhaps a labeling company that really started um, as an AI company. So we have uh, this ability to, right in the platform, very integrated, uh, include your models in your labeling task um, so that you can accelerate the the whole process. And this is, of course, what Trey was talking about. And it's, uh, of course, the name of this presentation. And I'll show you this in a minute. Uh, so for, for this initial example, I'm just going to create a task. And right here, assigned to me, this is what your workers will see. OK, so uh, park activities in Denver, uh, the ID of the project, date, basic information. We just have our seven images. And here's our thumbnails. The worker would click in. And uh, those instructions that we talked about before would be on that page, images that you might provide them, et cetera. And I think, uh, and now we're in the labor review. And I think it will be very easy to see uh, just how straightforward of a process it would be for your labelers to do some good labeling work for you. You've got a nice uh, view panel here with a, a nice clear uh, image of whatever it is that you're labeling. And then up top, we've got brightness, saturation, uh, color inversion, uh, and what other ways to manipulate the image. Uh, those kind of features might not play in importantly in a labeling project like the one we're looking at, where it's well lit in the daytime, but with more technical data, um, uh, satellite imagery, and these kind of things, it can be very helpful to be able to invert an image to bring contrast so that your, your human labelers can pick out details in your images. So that's the idea there. Um, and let's take a look. Let's, let's, let's draw a label here, right? So. Uh, let's just see. Here we've got a couple of uh, cyclists. Uh, 
If we want to add a label for the cyclist, we can do one of two things. We can just hit the plus button there and we get these crosshairs. Hope everyone can see that. And we just draw a box and we're done. Um, and uh, if we want to add a second box, we also have these keyboard shortcuts. Uh, you see this number one here. If I just press the number one, uh, you can actually add the crosshairs like that as well. And we actually think keyboard shortcuts are a really important part of a workflow like this. Um, so even if you haven't been a big fan of keyboard shortcuts in your own work, day-to-day -day work, uh, rapidly labeling many images like this, it can be helpful to use two hands, quickly click through the, the keyboard shortcuts, and we find you, uh, workers can quickly pick it up and this becomes an automatic part of their workflow. Okay, so we've labeled a couple cyclists. I don't like this label, it's kind of cutting off her head. I'm just gonna stretch it out a little bit there. And let's submit that for review. And um, so that was a still image. Now let's take a look at video. Now video is kind of a big deal, right? Because first of all, everybody's recording video. Um, it, it's uh, the one of the most common uh, consumer uh, uh, user generated content in the world and file size it's enormous uh, it, i think we mentioned the statistic before but you can think about a typical uh, uh, video is in 30 to 60 frames per second at 10, 10 seconds you're quickly at 300 to 600 individual images that you would have to label well uh, labeler solves this problem very well uh, we've got let's see let's do this runner here so so let's do this interpolation. Um, and what we're going to just do is uh, capture this runner, uh, pressing the plus button here and uh, dragging our button over here. And so what we're going to do here is this, you'll notice the, um, the slider here, the, the, the scrubber, uh, represents where we are on the video timeline. So we're going to start at one end with, with the first frame, drag it all the way to the other end, and we see that our bounding box that we drew is persistent, but what we do is we just grab it and we move it to the new location and easily resize it over our object. And that's all it takes um, to get a video interpolation in place. Now let's just take a look at how that's going to work. So now we can scoop back one frame, two frames, and we can see that it just follows the runner naturally by interpolating the video. And one thing that's nice about just the angle that this guy's running at is that the, it, the, his movement is nonlinear, right? So halfway down, it gets out of sync of where the runner's at. Labeler makes it easy to address this common uh, issue with moving objects across the frame, right? So all we do is we move our bounding box. I'm going to shrink it a little bit to where I like it. And it automatically reinterpolates all the connections in the video. And with that one adjustment, We've, we've matched our runner through, through most of where he's at. Let's tweak it again right there. There we go. And that's all it takes. Let's click check. We have just labeled hundreds of frames of video. We'd submit them for review and we're done, okay? Video interpolation, huge deal. In fact, labeling video otherwise would be incredibly terrible and painful. So uh, last thing I wanna show you is the best part, really. Um, so. Let's take a look now, that, that same data set, I've already trained an initial version of a model that we now can use to uh, power, um, power recommendations uh, uh, as we do our labels. Okay, so let's take a look at what this actually means. So as we click on new images, now we're getting suggestions from our model of what, with bounding boxes already drawn um, for what should be labeled. With this slider up here at the top, uh, this, these are you know, very confident predictions, so these would automatically be labeled, they're in green, but we can control the sensitivity of that slider. So let's take a look and we can see that, uh, for example, this running detection is only at 95% confidence. But it may be that we know that our model is always right basically above 80%. And this is uh, one of the areas where Clarify has just taken this incredibly complex uh, project of artificial intelligence and boiled it down into a really intuitive interface. So with this slider, 
um, you can tweak the behavior of your model. And by moving the slider over just a little bit to say 80%, uh, now this is going to be automatically labeled as well. Anything below is going to be ignored. And we could say that our, you know, anything below 20% of our model is no good. And then anything in this middle zone then gets sent to human labelers for review. Okay, and then with, with these tools, you can quickly uh, label your data much faster than a human ever could. And then once your data is labeled, the process of improving your model is actually unbelievably easy. And I want to just show you that here momentarily. So let's go back to Explore View. This was our test model. And so if we want to use the new labels that we've just added to improve our model, this is literally all there is to it. We go here and we click Train Model. And it's done. It'll take some. It'll take a minute to process, um, but it's ready for use in production uh, right away. There's no uh, allocation of GPUs in the training. Uh, you're ready to go. Um, and with that little sample, I actually want to turn this presentation over to you, the audience, and uh, take your questions so that we can uh, help you build your own AI-powered business solution. Thank you, Jeff. That was really great. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can stop. Uh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so I um, want to go ahead and address at least the two questions that have come in so far. Um, while I'm doing that, if you anyone else on the call has any other questions that popped up, um, please go ahead and put them in there and we'll address them as quickly as possible. Just a reminder, um, we are aiming for uh, a hard stop here at 145 Eastern time. Um, so uh, first question I have is from Christian. What is the recommended number of images for labeling in order for a model to be accurate? Um, yeah, that is one of the most common questions asked of uh, all time. Michael, how many times do you think you've been asked this question uh, since you've worked here? Uh, well, it comes with every project and then multiple times per project, so <laughs> would quite a few. And what's your uh, tried and true answer? The more, the better. Um, <laughs> the data is king. Um, I think if you're looking for an easy answer, it depends on the complexity of the object or the concept that you're trying to recognize. So uh, again, more is better, but I think clarify, say for an image classification model, maybe 50 images for a concept is a good place to start. Yeah, and I'll highlight that, as I was mentioning earlier, um, the best practice is just to start with what you have and begin training and look at the model evaluations. Our platform makes it really easy. Um, so um, like I said before, uh, not every use case requires you to have 1,000 or 10,000 images uh, labeled for each one, and it makes it easy to just label 10 or 15 percent of what you have, train it up, um, and then start looking on maybe a concept by concept basis where you're having problems and focusing your efforts where your model needs it the most. But as a hard and fast, if you want one, um, classification use cases, I usually say it, at least 50 to 100. Um, when I'm transfer learning a model uh, per concept class, uh, and then I usually like to recommend somewhere north of 200,000 uh, um, when I'm doing a deep training use case, so I'm training the entire graph. Um, hope that was useful for you. Glenn Ford, um, I've got, if I send tasks to clarify labelers, is it like a black box? How would I manage accuracy, for instance, since I don't have the direct control over the labelers related? Is it, is that work typically outsourced? Is it Mechanical Turk? Okay, a few things here. Um, first of all, um, black box, I would say no insofar as, and I'm not sure that Jeff showed too many of these capabilities necessarily. Um, maybe we'll have a follow on. Um, um, webinar just to tackle this. Maybe actually this is something we can include in our upcoming AI virtual conference perceived in October. Um, but essentially, um, we've built in capabilities to do both review, okay, review modes for quality assurance, and then soon we'll have what we call consensus mechanisms in there, Glenn. Um, these both allow, uh, in one case, for you to set up review so you can look at maybe 10% of a labeling order as they're coming in. And if it doesn't match your um, expectations, going ahead and not accepting that and sending it back um, for further um, labeling efforts. Um, so 
So in that way, we have at least one built-in way. And then soon, the ability to do um, decentralized um, quality assurance through consensus mechanisms. So only accept um, labeling annotations where at least X number of people, maybe two, three labelers agree on a potential label, right? This is a really good mechanism for um, ensuring the quality of your stuff, um, of your labeling. So um, last question on that one was, um, is it Mechanical Turk? Is it outsourced? Um, so we had spent a lot of time and effort and Michael did a lot of this labor himself. So thank you, Michael, for that, uh, of looking for different labeling partners uh, we have in the background uh, that we partner with. Lots of different testing and, you know, weeding out um, all of the non top performers. So it is um, our own managed uh, labeling team that um, we rely on for doing that. OK, um, Glenn Ford has another question here. Is it possible to plug our own models in for the retraining step, but still leverage Clarify's ability to spin up the needed processors? Um, so that is a great question. And um, that is uh, essentially on the roadmap should be here. Um, fingers yeah. crossed by the end of this quarter, right, or I believe actually beginning of Q4 to be able to import your own model architectures um, into the platform with our deep training suite. Once again, that's a great another topic that potentially, so hopefully um, I think Tom Molfetto, who's been asking for all of your questions, will be noting these and we can tackle these potentially at our upcoming AI virtual conference. Um, okay, uh, we've got another question. I'm not entirely sure how uh, to pronounce the first name, um, but the question is, since I arrived late for this evening, is the recording going to be available later? Yep, we are recording this and will be sent out. Uh, I made that note at the top of the um, presentation for this, and we will be sending this out to everyone uh, that's on this call at the end. Okay. Um, do you crowdsource labeling work for large uh, sets of images? Right. So um, once again, um, if there's two two methods here that we went through in the um, demonstration here today, um, two ways of handling your large data set needs, right? Using task uh, in task manager to distribute your labeling efforts across your own in-house team of labelers that you're able to set up in the platform and manage and uh, now the added capability of using um, a third party, our own third party labeling team um, that is a third party for hire labeling team. You're gonna pay per image and per annotation with that option. I hope- Yeah, I'm just gonna interject that. So crowdsourcing is not on the road back uh, in the near term because uh, largely because of data privacy concerns. Um, oh, you yeah. think you, you, by crowdsourcing, you're implying, Jeff, you're thinking crowdsourcing. Yeah, well, this is one approach that exists um, out there, but we're, for, with Clarify, this would all be with Clarify's labelers. This is correct. Not, right. Yeah. yeah. So either it's going to be in your own in house um, team or it's going to be our team, but not necessarily um, some third party, other different crowds. Yeah, it's not like a social platform for labeling or anything like that. Bingo. Sorry, I understood the question, but yes, that makes sense. Um, any other questions? We only have about two minutes here. Um, so uh, let's see here. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, begin to wrap here. Uh, before we go, um, do want to mention what I've uh, kind of uh, alluded to a few times. If you'll go to the next slide for me there, Jeff. Bet. We do have a very exciting upcoming uh, Perceive 2020 virtual AI conference coming up uh, October 21st. Um, we will be rehashing a lot of um, the concepts we talked about today, different labeling needs and different approaches to doing that. Um, we'll have lots of industry experts uh, participating in that conference, talking on a whole range of different kind of deep learning um, problems and solutions and state of the art and all the cool things going on in the space that starts at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, ending at 6. If you want to register for that, go to clarify.com forward slash perceive hyphen 2020. So 
Thank you all so much for attending our session today. Their recording for this will be sent out to each of you, and we look forward to talking to you sometime soon. Thank you all.